Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make Salisbury steak meatballs. It's really easy to put together. I'm going to pair this with some homemade mashed potatoes. So I got my potatoes boiling back there while we put together the meatballs. Now I had to wait a little bit because we had a storm come running through here, so hopefully it's cleared up. If y'all are ready, I know I am. We're just going to start with one pound of ground beef and then we're going to put that into a medium sized bowl. Now if you want to double this recipe, you sure can. Alright, I'm just going to break up the ground beef a little bit. Now this recipe has all of the same ingredients that I make my Salisbury steaks with. Okay, so what you're going to need, all you have to do is pull these ingredients out of your pantry. Panko crumbs, or you can use bread crumbs. Worcestershire gives it a nice flavor. Salt. Some black pepper. Garlic powder. Onion powder. And then we need to bind it all together. Oh, one egg. We're going to go ahead and add a quarter cup of our panko crumbs, or you can use bread crumbs, but don't use the Italian flavor, just use regular bread crumbs. We're going to add that in. Now panko crumbs are very light and crispy. Add little air pockets all through the meatballs, a little crunchiness or crispiness. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and add the egg. Always like to crack it into another bowl and then add it. That way we're not digging out shells through all of that. Now I like to just sprinkle stuff across my meat, but I'm going to go ahead and measure some things out for you. So I've got my Worcestershire. I'm going to put in one teaspoon and I like to just drizzle it across the top because that's normally what I do with Worcestershire's. I just drizzle it across the top, but I'm going to measure for y'all today. Give it some flavor. Garlic powder. I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of everything in. And some onion powder. It's going to enhance the onions that we're going to add later. Go. Quarter teaspoon of black pepper. All right, I'm using half a teaspoon here, so I'm going half with everything on that. There we go. And then we're going to add in a little grain of salt. Quarter of a teaspoon. All right, we're going to blend this mixture all together. And then we're going to form some meatballs. Now if you were just doing Salisbury steak, this would be the same recipe. You would just form these into oval shapes instead of the meatballs. Alright, let's go in. Now I'm a big fan of meatballs. Yeah. Italian meatballs with spaghetti, Swedish meatballs. Well, I tell you what, I grew up with Swedish meatballs and I love them. I make them for almost every holiday. They're like an appetizer <laughs> because we still have the turkey and the ham and things like that. But I always have to have meatballs. And that's the way I grew up. So my family loves that too. All right, once we get this all mixed up, we're going to take a cookie scoop. Now you can just use the glove like that. And then we're just going to run it through the meat mixture, pull it up to the side, scrape off any excess that's along the edge there. Pop it into your hand, roll it into a meatball shape. And I'm going to continue to do those until we get all the mixture done. I'm just placing these on a plate right now. That way we can put them in the pan all together once it gets nice and hot. 
So it's about a tablespoon and a half. If you don't have a cookie scoop, you can do that. Base it off of that measurement. It's definitely starting to clear up out there. That storm went away, so that's good. It did make it a little cooler outside for us, which is nice. Because I definitely have some gardening to do later. We're going to need to start browning these meatballs up. So in a large skillet, we're going to place it on medium-high heat. got one tablespoon of butter in my skillet and I'm going to add just a little drizzle of some cooking oil. And then we'll get that sizzling. Now it made 21 meatballs of that size. So you could base it off of that. These are the perfect size actually. They're a nice bite and also they cook through and get nice and tender for this recipe. nice and okay it's got a nice sizzle going on in there we're gonna take our meatballs and place them in uh, let start sizzling now what we want to do is brown these on all sides we're not necessarily cooking them through at this time but you do want to get them nice and brown and my husband loves them when they're kind of crispy on the outside, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave these here for just a few minutes and then start rotating them around. Now, while those are sitting there, I'm going to go ahead and grab an onion or two. And we're just going to take the ends off the onion. Now this is a yellow onion. You can use a white onion if you want. Right, pop out that outer layer. Now I'm going to cut it in half, and then we're just going to cut on the lines. So we're just going to leave them in the half rings here. All right, we'll start rotating these around. Now if you need to add any extra oil, you can, which I'm going to do. You don't want these to dry out. All right, we'll let these sit here for just a couple of minutes. And I'm just going to pop these out, get these ready to go. There we go, just like that. This was one pretty large onion, so you can do two medium onions, three small onions. All right, we got those all ready to go. Yeah, they look good. We're going to go ahead and take the meatballs out. Just place them on a plate. Because that's what you would do with the Salisbury steaks. So we're trying to keep the recipe pretty close. Alright, we're going to set these aside and then we're going to add our onions. Alright, you want to turn down your heat to a medium. Now I took off the pan for just a few minutes to kind of cool down the grease for just a little bit so those onions don't like burn. And then I just put it on a medium heat. We've got enough oil in the pan, but the recipe does call for an additional tablespoon of butter for flavor. Yeah, you see, it's not burning. It's keeping a nice color to it. So let's go ahead now and add the onions. All right, we're gonna season with a little bit of salt. and some black pepper. We're going to cook these down until they're softened and lightly browned. It looks so good. Mm. What are y'all thinking so far? I have two more ingredients left to pull this all together. meatballs look so good. Now if you didn't know, because I get asked quite a lot in the comments if I have cookbooks. Now 
I have volume one, two, and three back here. You can find the links to the cookbooks in the description box down below, or you can go to my recipe blog, katherinesplates.com, and I'll type it out right here. You can find the links there under the cookbook tab. And like I've said before, I am working on a full dessert cookbook. Let me get it ready for the fall and the holidays coming up at that time. I'm hoping to have it ready and out by the end of August time frame. Now, you get all those delicious pumpkin desserts, holiday desserts, anything like that. These were ones that I've made, and there's some few extra in there also that I love, but I've not shown you yet. So we'll pull those out during those holiday times and work them together. My onions are browned and softened. I'm going to bring you over here, show you those other two ingredients. Put it right here. One cup of beef broth. Put that in. Oh, that's one. Now here's the other one. Gravy mix. Yes, chicken. You can use the brown gravy mix. You can use the chicken. This is a lighter flavor. And that's fine because we got that beef broth in there. We'll lighten it up. So we're going to add that. This is a .87 ounce size package. So we're going to go ahead and add that. We're going to blend this all together. Bring it to a simmer. Yeah. Pull that right out of your pantry. All right, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water, and this will thicken up. All right, let's take our meatballs. We're going to add them in. Get them all nice and coated. Look at that. Don't forget all those juices. That's our flavor. Let's blend this all together. Coat them very well. Fun way to make Salisbury steak, right? In meatball form. All right. I'm going to raise the heat up a little bit so we can bring that to a boil. All right, once that comes to a boil, we're going to lower the heat down to a low. Oh my gosh, it looks so delicious. Grab a spoon. Give it a little taste. Mm. Make sure your flavors are where you want them. We're going to place the lid on. We're just going to simmer these for 15 minutes. My potatoes are cooked nice and tender. I'm going to drain them. I'm just going to make mashed potatoes out of them. And then I'm going to serve these up. This smells delicious, and the aroma is all over the house. <laughs> okay, look at that. Look at that delicious onion gravy. Oh, rich, thick, scrumptious. All right, let me make my plate for you. Show you how tender these are. Nice homemade mashed potatoes. Make a little circle in the center. Let's add these delicious meatballs with that onion gravy. Fresh parsley. All right, what do y'all think? Salisbury steak meatballs with a delicious onion gravy. Let me grab a fork, give it a try for you. I 
There's my bite. Mm. What a fun way to make Salisbury steak with onion gravy. Y'all, they're nice and tender. You have to serve them up with mashed potatoes. If you don't, let me know down in the comments what you would serve these with. Alright, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that bell notification. That way, you'll always know when shows like this one here are posted. I'll see y'all on the next episode.